This is the best laptop. Just, just plain and simple for not every single use case, but my use case. And that's the one that matters the most to me. Let's have a look. This is the HP Dragonfly Elite, and I have been using the G3 for the past year, and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Although the new one's much better, not just because it's new, but it's way cheaper, like $2,500 cheaper. Like a, a, a lot, a lot cheaper. Let's get into it. This one's probably actually half similar, but uh, we can figure out what the exact spec is. This is a nice box. I've never seen one of these fancy boxes before. These are business laptops and you actually have to pay like an extra $10 for the premium unboxing experience. I haven't gotten it before. Ho ho, we can go over there for a second. Here we go, charger's nice and simple. 65 watts that's being delivered over USB type C and it's a nice little size. I think also this premium cable here is an extra $5 if you wanna pay for it. Unlike Dell, they don't give you a dongle in the box because they give you IO. Oh, I like this here. They do give you the option of from the factory, it can come loaded with Linux or FreeDOS and then you don't have to pay for the Windows license and also you just don't have to deal with Microsoft at all if you don't want to. The first thing that they denote, number one, are the internal wireless antennas. I'm sure that's the most important thing. This is too long, it's a paperwork. What? <laughs> it's, laptop, it's too long on the paperwork, but then how will the people know that this has NFC tapping area on the touchpad? That's actually pretty important if you're in like high security places. I am sad though, it looks like HP sent over the silver when they have this nice like dark gray version that just looks so much better. Okay, okay, all right. Wow, they have not changed a thing, which is really okay by me because this thing's great. <laughs> Let's have a little look around here. So first of all, it comes with an all magnesium chassis that is just super rigid and also very light. All right, it is 1.2 kilograms or 2.7 pounds. I think that's slightly heavier than this one actually. Oh no, the old one's slightly heavier. Must be the D-brand skin. Probably my absolute favorite thing about this laptop is that it is a thin and light, but it has solid IO. So here we have got Thunderbolt 4, USB type A, and headphone microphone combo jack. Around the other side, we have Thunderbolt 4 again, a 5G SIM card slot, and HDMI 2.1. I have to say the inclusion of USB type A and HDMI has made my life just so much easier. Like it's not very hard putting a dongle in your backpack, but it's a lot easier to just not have to use a dongle in the first place. Here we can see again that nice magnesium chassis. It is one of the stiffest on the market. It isn't quite up there with like Apple or Razer in terms of stiffness, but I do think it is up there with them in terms of just overall feel and quality. And actually, I kind of like the feel of this a bit more. Probably my favorite feature with the design though are what they call their pillow block corners. Right here, it's just nice and rounded over. And every single time that I go at CES or Computex to someone's booth that has a laptop, I'm like, hey guys, that's really nice how you have sharp edges here that look like kind of cool on camera for your like marketing materials. I hate it. It's awful. When you're like holding your laptop like this, do you know how nice it is to have rounded corners? It's fantastic. It's so comfortable. It's actually one of my favorite features. <laughs> I guess we could continue talking about the build quality of this one, but I've been using this one for a year and uh, how has it held up? I've lightly damaged the finish in a couple of spots. Like you can see like there's a ding there couple little scratches there, but overall, after a year of pretty hard use, no complaints. The first thing that's awesome about this computer is the display. So it has a three by two, so 1920 by 1280 on this one, or you can get the 3000 by 2000 version if you go with the OLED panel, but uh, I really think you should stick with the 1080 one. First of all, it gets you three to four hours more battery life than OLED, which is just massive, absolutely huge. And my favorite thing about this is definitely the battery life. So I am not willing to sacrifice that for better visuals. Also, here we have a matte display, which is just, there's not enough of them. There's not nearly enough of them. Now the panel itself for watching content and 
creating content and that stuff is only okay. HP advertises 400 nits peak brightness, but in our testing, we are only able to find 340 nits, which is going to be noticeable. That said though, I have been able to use this indirect sunlight, but only for like using Microsoft Word and Word editing. I cannot watch YouTube videos in direct sunlight. Also pretty awful on this panel is pixel response time. We're looking at 32 to 54 milliseconds. That is brutal. Like it's a sort of thing where like even just the mouse mousing around like this, I can very easily tell that the latency on this display is bad or watching YouTube videos even. I can tell at the pixel response time is just not good. It's not good enough. If you want to play games on this, don't. It's awful. <laughs> Exter. Thanks to Exter for sponsoring today's video. Their wallets are crafted with premium leather sourced from LWG gold certified tanneries, can hold up to 12 cards and even come with a money strap if you're using those dollar dollar bills. Check out their quick card mechanism, which gives you easy access to every card you need with the click of a button. It also features RFID protection, so your money, cards, and identity are all kept safe and secure. Get up to 25% off during Exter's Valentine's Day sale with code SHORTCIRCUIT at the link down below. So uh, if the brightness isn't great and the pixel response times aren't great, why am I saying this is fantastic? Well, very simply because I can write Word documents on this for like 12 hours straight and I do not get eye strain. We've got the matte display, we have got just it looks like paper and it also is color accurate to boot. So we saw an average Delta E of 2.24, a max of 4.42. That isn't quite the average Delta E of two that you would want for professional color work, but I don't do that. I just need to check stuff and know that it's going to be broadly accurate. And this is more than good enough for that. Also like you could just calibrate it. Another reason this is in my opinion, the best laptop on the market is because of the keyboard. It is simply put the best. There is no better keyboard on a laptop in existence right now, in my opinion. It's an A+, it's an A++ if I could give that. Normally when I'm talking about laptop keyboards, sort of like an A- is when you can get up to full speed, but maybe it isn't the most satisfying. That's something like, the MacBook Pro. It's legitimately a good keyboard. If you can't type fast on it, that's your problem, but I just don't love it. When you get into the A, we're looking at like, you know, the stability of every single key is good. The travel's good. The feel is good. To get that A plus, you need that just extra, the, I don't even know what you would call it, but it is this keyboard right here. It has almost like a desktop feel to it that I don't know how they were able to achieve, but once we get our keyboard tester up and running, I'm sure that it will validate me. Because like, if we look here, like the key stability is absolutely incredible. I'm pushing on the corner. On a lot of laptops, you'll see this whole key sort of flex down. This right here, I'm getting none of that. The whole key presses when you're pressing on the corner. Also the consistency from side to side, is absolutely flawless. The force required to press these keys is identical across pretty much the whole thing, which is of course aided by the excellent chassis rigidity of this magnesium frame. It is, it is absolutely fantastic. Another thing that's great is the trackpad. I don't think that it stands out a whole lot in the way that the keyboard does. It's instead just great. Like I have never once thought about the trackpad when I've been using the laptop because it just works. It is glass topped. I do wish that they had integrated force like Apple or Dell or MSM. Most people have force clicking at this point and that can be quite good. And I do really appreciate that you're able to tune it. This, uh, you can't do any of that. But at the same time, it's accurate, it's glass top, it feels good to use, I like it. Oh, I didn't mention it before, but you can plug in the power charger on either side, which is just so convenient. It can be there, it can be there, love it. Moving over to performance though, in here we have an Intel i7 1365U, which is 10 cores, which 
sounds like a lot, but it's actually two performance cores and eight efficiency. And uh, in my experience using a laptop, which has a 1265U, which is basically the same as the 1365U, it's not particularly fast. Like in a lot of things, like even web browsing at times can feel just a little bit slow when you compare it to other laptops. Like it's, it's not that like, it doesn't have that like snappiness that some of them do. But at the same time, compared to like a dual core thin and light from a couple of years ago, this absolutely destroys it. Like if you compare this to basically any like 11th gen laptop chip, this thing will on its face. Okay, let's see here. Running Cinebench R23. I want to beat the i7 7700K. That's 6,300 points. And in my mind, that's like the last, that was like when Intel peaked, just before AMD came in and started making them look kind of silly. Oh my God, we just beat it. All right, cool. This thing was able to get 7,254 points in Cinebench R23. And I think that there are some stupid Windows is trying to update or stuff in the background at the moment. But overall, if like you need to export stuff on this, it isn't brutal. It, it is still a thin and light, but you can do the stuff. Here are the results that we got from the labs. There are the graphs. It's more than powerful enough for me. Like we can look here. Oh, watch it. Watch this. No dongle. Boom, we're screen recording my laptop now. Haha. -ha. Like this isn't anything crazy, but this is a SolidWorks model that I was able to build on this computer and not have any issues with it. It's only a couple of components and they're all pretty simple, but at the same time, this thing can do it. No problem. Moving on from the processor, we also have 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 4,800 mega transfers per second. We have a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD from Samsung. Intel Wi-Fi 6E, love to see that. And of course, Iris XE graphics. Uh, this isn't a gaming laptop, but uh, we proceeded to play games anyway. This is bad. I don't like it at all. What I am seeing though, is that this is not a good gaming experience. Like aside from the frame rate only being okay-ish, the pixel response time is just a complete no-go for a game like this. Like it's actually hard to like figure out what's on the go. Everything just feels like it's in slow motion. It is not enjoyable. This panel is not capable of updating fast enough to, for gameplay. Like it, it just feels so jello-y and generally terrible. Don't game on it. It's an office laptop. <laughs> the speakers on this are from Bang & Olufsen and they are fantastic. They have been the benchmark for the last year for pretty much all of the other laptops. You guys have heard them a bunch. Let's just sniff them one more time. That's loud. I wonder if they've improved. Yep, that's, that's good. That's good stuff right there. How does it compare to the old Dragonfly Elite? Good. It's the same, which is excellent because I've compared this old one to a bunch of different laptops and it is very favorable in almost every single matchup, even when compared to laptops that are twice its size with twice as many speakers. It's not just pretty loud and has a decent extension, but it has a lot of clarity. So something like the MacBook Air has more bass and like a bit more of a V curve, whereas this right here seems a lot more focused on like clarity of voice and stuff like that in the speaker tuning. And I quite appreciate it. It's, it's awesome. Webcam, it's great. Uh, so this right here is a 1440p webcam. You very rarely see that on laptops. And overall, it just does an excellent job. Like look here, it's exposing for my face. We move around, it is still just exposing pretty much perfectly for my face. It's a little bit hot there, but it probably will figure it out, maybe. Okay, it isn't, but it still is doing a pretty good job. Also, what is fantastic and I really, really like about this webcam is you press right here, boop, she's gone. You've got a tiny little shutter right here, tiny little shutter that goes across there so you know that no one's gonna be spying on you and there also is a hard button for the microphone cutoff and you can now probably not hear me. 
four Torx T5 screws later, and we are in. Thank you HP so much for making getting into this simple. They can be kind of bad for sticking screws underneath this plastic foot right here. And uh, once you take this off once, it never goes back on correctly again. So thank you very much for not making us have to destroy these. In here, the star of the show is the 68.4 watt hour battery. Now, there are other brands that have larger capacity batteries in similarly like sized and weighted laptops, but HP's tuning of just all of the power consumption in this is absolutely exceptional. This thing right here in our endurance testing for labs was able to get 13 hours and 21 minutes. Now with the stress test, it did die in two hours and 30 minutes, but you realistically are not fully loading this ever. I have had no trouble at all getting like a solid 12 hours of battery life out of this and not even trying. Like I don't reduce the screen brightness. I don't do anything. It just works. Also, you have the incredible benefit of Windows Modern Standby not really being an issue because uh, I made the video on that. This is my personal laptop. I had some problems and I have a direct line to Microsoft. So uh, it's actually like very solved on this device specifically. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for solving my problem at least. <laughs> now for upgradability, this thing is not fantastic. You are able to replace the SSD. So we can come in right here, lift up this little shieldy shield. There it is. So you can upgrade your storage. Although I would be careful if you do that because some of these drives do come encrypted and it might get really super mad at you if you swap it out. Just make sure that like your BitLocker settings and stuff are all sorted before you get into that. Also, we have our 5G antenna right here. We also have our Intel Wi-Fi card over here. So unfortunately this is soldered down. You can't upgrade it, but also, I don't know, if you don't want 5G anymore, I guess you could throw a wireless card over here. That'd be kind of dumb. There's no RAM upgradeability. Uh, the cooler is not particularly large single heat pipe right here. I don't really care. It's a thin and light. This is the only thing that matters. But of course, the worst thing about the old one was the price. This one, my old one, came in at $3,700. And that's because of like Intel V Pro that allows you to like manage the device remotely. Your IT department can set up 40 of them at once if they want to, that sort of stuff. And also like security options and crap. There's a good chance that you don't want any of that. The one that we have here starts at 1769 and as spec is 2279, which is quite expensive. But let's just go over to HP's website for a second and uh, we can see that they say it starts at $1,200, which is a lot, a lot better. Let's look at the one that I would want to purchase. We can go in here. Core i5 is fine, i7 is nice, but I actually just don't care. It's a thin and light, you might get a tiny bit more battery. Now the most expensive option that we're going to be putting on here is the touchscreen. So I really like the anti-glare touchscreen. That's the one that we have on both of these. It is absolutely fantastic. But if you don't want that, you can get it cheaper if you don't go for the anti-glare. And so the one that I'll be buying comes in at $1,455. All right, let's get a comparable MacBook Air here. We've got the M2, not the good CPU, cause I don't know, Intel is kind of slow these days. You need 16 gigabytes of memory, no matter what Apple tells you, they are liars if they say that eight gigabytes is enough. 512 gigabyte SSD, that's $1,500. So uh, yeah, for that price, I'm getting the HP for sure. So yeah, Dragonfly G4. Uh, if you already have a G3, you're not gonna upgrade most likely but probably most of you don't. So if you're looking for a laptop that's thin and light and has heaps of battery and it's Windows, this is in my opinion, the absolute best that exists. Just like you're the absolute best that exists. Hit like, get subscribed, and just have a fantastic old day. See you later.